Okay, we're live on the internet. Where's my drink? Yep. What is going on, guys? So we should start people. This is Marvin. Um, we will know. I'm pretty sure we're live, but we will start seeing people say hello in a moment here. Let's go. We should be live. I'm pretty sure. Are we alive? Hello. Yeah, we're live. So. As I said, I don't know, all last week, and are we live? What is happening? Why are people commenting, like, all kinds of weird stuff? Uh, there's Kyle. Kyle, are we live? <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Okay, we've got to be. What is happening, people? Um, as I said, all last, like, uh, yeah, we've got to be. Yes, we're live, okay. Um, <laughs> Got the confirmation. As, uh, I'm all over the place, people, sorry. <laughs> as I said last week and uh, this week at some point, uh, that's Marvin. Uh, Marvin plays for the Sacramento DMG semi-professional paintball team that plays primarily, actually only in the National X-Ball League. Um, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to ask a bunch of questions to Marvin, and then we had some people submit some questions that they want answered that I think are pretty good. Uh, and then Jake, many of you people know Jake, he is answering, not answering, Jake is watching the chat and looking for questions you guys have. So if when we're talking you have questions that pertain to like tournament paintball or, I don't know, questions that aren't about paintball products, leave a comment and Jake will see it and it will go in there. Jennifer is being very distracting. <laughs> so we're not looking at the chat anymore. So let's start. Your name's not Marvin. It's not. Well, kinda. Why I mean, I'm people, known as Marvin. Everyone just calls him Marvin. Even my parents call me Marvin. <laughs> it's, it's like people with nicknames. Sometimes people don't even realize it's their real name. So we don't necessarily have to say why people call you Marvin. I just want to point out that your name is not actually Marvin. It's not. I don't know. You know, I actually have a funny story about that. Um, so one of my teammates, when they used to have the NPPA, or NPPL uh, APPA thing, you know, you could like go online and do your roster thing or whatever. Um, one of my teammates was looking at it, Scott Tonarelli, and he was like, hey, man, you need to get on the roster or something. You know, they're not going to let you <laughs> into the event. And I'm like, oh, yeah, great yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I didn't put my, or my, I was already on the roster as my real name. But then uh, the next event he looked at again, and, and he's like, man, this William Gerber guy is still <laughs> on the roster, and you're not on here. Like, what's the deal with that? It took him, like, three events to finally figure out that my name was William Gerber. And I was like, <laughs> he's like, was so mad. He's like, you let that ride for like half a year having me think that you weren't even on there. Well, Scott's an idiot. <laughs> I got him good. I mean, you know, he's, he couldn't see your face though. He couldn't. Well, he no. can see your face. He should be able to. No, I think on that one. Uh, he's no, just I don't an know. Scott's I don't know. just an idiot. I mean, you know, he trusted me. He's my friend. It's easy to, you know, fool your friend, right? He's just, they're going to take your word like, for it. Right, whatever. <laughs> so paintball. How did you get into playing paintball? Uh, you know, it's a funny thing. Uh, so I used to play like Call of Duty and Battlefield way back in the day, and uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say I was like super serious about it, but you know, like anybody who's competitive, I'd get angry about it sometimes. And one day I was playing, and you know, I had like a sick kill streak going, and I was like running away from a dude who had the drop on me and try to like run around a corner real quick, and my player's uh, hip or something got stuck on like a doorknob or something stupid. And, you know, the guy ended up shooting me and killing me and ruining my kill streak. And I was so heated about it. <laughs> I was like, if that was real life, like, you'd be running and you'd, like, move your hip out of the way real quick and go around the corner. But instead, I'm, this idiot's getting stuck on it. Like, how real is that? I'm just, like, yelling about it, ready to throw my controller. And uh, one of my, the guy who I started playing paintball with, uh, M Matt Van Camp, he was like, oh, yeah, you know, you ever play, like, airsoft or paintball before? That's way more realistic. And I had played paintball, you know handful of times when I was a kid at like you know random creeks or like construction sites and stuff construction <laughs> and uh, 
Yeah, and um, I was like, yeah, paintball. You know, I, I used to not really be able, be able to afford it because, you know, I was doing that when I was, like, 15. But, you know, I was growing at that point, like, 22 or 21 or something. I was like, yeah, I'd, why did I ever quit that? Yeah, I should dust off the old spider shutter and, you know, go <laughs> go play. My second paintball gun. Yeah. So that's how I got into it. I went to uh, – I just, like, went on Google, like, typed in – Cal, you know, paintball parks in Sacramento and Capital Edge came up, had great reviews, mm. and I went and um, man, it was I mean, it was sick. Uh, you know, Deep, uh, Dave's brother, he was there, and man, he really just like just I don't want to say like took me under his wing or anything, but uh, man, he was just a great ambassador for paintball. You know, he just really helped like facilitate how and just show me how like positive of an environment it was you know before paintball I was kind of into some negative things and stuff you know like some people are when they're growing up and paintball was just so positive you know but it still uh fulfilled these needs I have you know like the need to to wreck stuff you know pretty (laughs) much and uh and you know make friends and be creative and everything like that so uh yeah it was just it I loved it and then you know, it, what was funny was the first time I played, I just got shot by little kids all day. Like, yeah. I mean, I probably shot yes. like one kid, and then the rest of the time I got dunked on. So I played on a Saturday. So that night I was like, no way I got shot by little kids. <laughs> so I went home and like went on like, I don't know if you guys remember that site, TechPB. They used to have like all these little uh, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. tips and tricks. And I went on Google, yeah, yeah. Googled, you know, uh, paintball pro paintball tips or like how to play paintball like a pro and like watched every single video I could that night for hours and then I went back and just like shot so many people in the face like was just instantly way better than that I got like a three pack on the air ball field like and I was just hooked I was I was like dude this yes this is me I love this and then from then on I just played every single Saturday and Sunday and here I am like seven or eight years later or something still doing the same thing I'm actually surprised it was Capital Edge that, like, you went back to, because, like, I was like, man, I guess it wasn't that long ago. Because, like, I remember when Capital Edge opened. Yeah. And I remember playing paintball 10 years before that. Okay. So that just shows how long that, like, yeah, I've been playing paintball playing for a Playing for a minute, Brad. Yeah, you're, you're kind of a veteran, dude. <laughs> Makes me feel old. <laughs> I guess I am old, though, so that kind of works out. So Are you, you played. Yeah. Oh, okay. You played paintball. At Capital Edge, but how long was it until you, like, got on a team or started playing tournaments? Man, so what's funny, actually, is, you know, since I watched all those trick tip videos and stuff, yeah, I I got good kind of quick. And, um, you know, Dave would come out and give me random tips and stuff. And uh, Dave Baines. Dave Dave Baines, yeah. That owns Capital Edge Paintball Park. Yeah. And he also owns a DMG. Yeah. he uh, would give me tips, and, you know, I think he liked the way I took criticism, you know. A lot of people like to talk back or give their own little piece, but, and I knew he was, kind of, like, good or whatever. I heard people, you know, he's like the Capital Edge mascot, you know, the Beast Man or whatever. So I, I knew he was good, but I didn't know a lot about pro paintball or anything. So, yeah, just, you know, listen to what he said. And uh, But originally I didn't want to play a tournament paintball because um, – I would see those guys like yelling at each other on the field and getting mad, and yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. "Dude, if someone was yelling at me like that, like I would fight them." I don't like, deal with this. I, I didn't understand though. Yeah, like yeah. growing up, I didn't really play team sports or anything. You know, mm-hmm. I was into like riding skateboards and hanging out with friends and stuff. So I, I didn't understand it. It's a little serious. Yeah, and um, but yeah, um, so these guys came up to me and they were trying to get me to play for their team, and I kept saying no, no, no. And finally they were like, look, if you play this tournament with us, we can get you some discounts on paint and we'll hook you up <laughs> even when it's not the tournament. Okay. And I was like, all right, uh, okay, I'll play, you know, if you can get me paint for a little discount and stuff. So I, I started doing that. And then uh, we did all right in our first tournament. I want to say we got like fifth or something, but man, I was shooting. I played this front snake back then. I was shooting so many people. Yeah. I'm like, look at all these nerds. They think they're super good at paintball. They're trying their hardest, but sorry, their hardest right? isn't good enough. And, <laughs> you know, it's, not the, it's like online gaming, you know? You're just like ruining yeah, yeah. people's day. So. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun for me. Which is good. So you played, you played the snake? That's funny. Yeah. I guess that's kind of like that, though, when all these, like, new like five man brand new five man teams or like brand new three man teams they're like oh you're the best person so play the snake <laughs> it's like they instantly like put the best person in like the hardest position which is normal but now you definitely don't play snake 
Yeah, not so much anymore. I mean, sometimes I wind up in there somehow, but yeah. I think it's fun. I'm always like, if we're just not serious, I'm like, I'm going to sneak out the break. <laughs> I don't get like the opportunity too often, so it's happening. So you probably play the W. Just like I think the W is the greatest bunker ever. I love the W. But that's because you play it, I yeah. think. I mean, you know, I, I, don't know. I, I like it. I like, um, you know, before I felt like the game was very tape based. You either push the snake or you yeah, push yeah. the Dritos. And mm -hmm. I like the W's. You know, it's like, not only is it a spot you can go to and like lock down a side of the field, but with like all the run throughs and stuff you can do, it's like, if they don't watch you, you can literally run down the field and through yeah. the middle and cut through and, you know, get at least one dude or a couple more. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I, really, I think it added more depth to the game with that third, you know, line of attack. That yeah, for take. sure. I even, like, I don't know, man. I just like it because I can go there and shoot everybody. <laughs> I feel like I can just look through the window and be like, ding, 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 okay, there's I mean, four guys. I mean, it's intense, too. You know, you're up there, you can hear everybody. Everybody's trying to shoot you. Everyone yeah, wants yeah, to yeah, yeah. run through and bunker you. For and, sure. And, you know, you got to sack up and be down to wear a bunch of hits right after you bunker their guy because right. especially in tournaments everyone punishes you as soon as you go take out their dude so it's like i'll shoot you in the back once and then it's like yeah oh they the shoot head. you in your front <laughs> then when you turn around and run off they just hammer your back and yeah. i mean paintballs don't hurt so i just laugh oh. when people do that because i'm like oh you think paintballs hurt well, that's what i'm saying it, so okay i don't think it's that bad <laughs> i don't understand so um so i should have i should have addressed uh something before this started some of you guys have like uh super chatted which is like extremely cool and much appreciated so when we're done with this interviewee thing i will address those okay and nice. I, hope, I hope that works um it's not sorry <laughs> so dmg like what was what was the first team name called uh, are you, do you mean when it was Sacramento Damage? No, 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 no. Like, your first, the first team you were on. Uh, like, I remember vaguely. So, I remember, like, somehow skulls are like a skeleton and, like, white jerseys, maybe. Oh, okay. So that was the Crusaders. Crusaders. There yeah, we go. Yeah, that was, okay. that was what I played Division 5 with. My first team was uh, Hidden Rage. It was I this team. Know. I was on there with, like, Mike Maroney, who used to play for, really? uh, yeah, for DMG Semi Pro, like, Maroney's year, been around some years time. ago. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he was good back then, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I played with that team for a couple times, but, you know, I just – they didn't want to play every weekend. You know, I was just hungry for paintball at the time. Or, I mean, I still am. But, um, so, yeah, and, you know, once I got to Division Five, started rolling with dudes that wanted to play, like, every single weekend, you know, yeah, both yeah. days a bunch. And, <clears throat> you know, won a, tourna uh, won a tournament, took a couple seconds, like a couple thirds. We had a good season. So then, yeah, I just kept running with it from there. But then DMG, like, you've played with DMG. I thought about this. I'm like, so I remember the original Sacramento damage tryouts. Yeah. And whatever. Um, and I think the only two people that are, like, still around is you and Shane. Yep. That was a long-ass time ago. Yeah. I think that's crazy. Like, most people come and go so often. Why... Why stay? Like, what? I don't know. Um, Not like why. I don't know. It's just that, like, I don't know. I just thought about that. And I'm like, that's crazy because you went from, like, all the way up through that whole team. Like, whatever it started, Division 3 or 4. And D4, then, like, yeah. 2. It was Division 1 at a time. And then it was, like, I don't know. They had the Challengers thing. It's all confusing. Yeah. But, like, all the way. I don't know. Um, <laughs> that, that's not a question. I don't know. It's just I don't know. That's just good. What 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 is my actual question here? I said you have been on DMG for a long time. That's what made me like I guess think about that. I think maybe longer than anyone. Whatever. So we'll just go into this. Like this is a question that like people in this chat have asked me before, and I know a common question with a semi-pro team why like what's the end point what's the goal i mean two years in semi-pro and you guys won the first two events yeah i get this last this last one was ninth place and you're in third overall yeah. but what happens <laughs> when you win the next two what happens if you win chicago and then world cup or get second at one of those in first or whatever so ultimately you mean we go pro basically 
uh, that I mean, we're one step closer like, to our goal. I mean, so is that the ultimate goal? Um, the ultimate goal is to be the best pro team. Is to win a pro series. You know, win win the NXL. You know, world title. Be the series champs. Yeah, sure. Win World Cup. I mean, and I mean, I mean even greater good. than that. Our our greatest wish is to become you know the best pro team ever, ever you know, in, in history. But um, that's going to take a lot of work, and you know, yeah. taking it more one step at a time. You know, first got to go pro. But yeah, my my vision is to either be the best on the best team ever or just be the best player ever. I mean, good. Yeah. I like to hear that. I mean, I like to hear that. I mean, I hate to say this, but like the goal of being the best player ever is a good goal because I I think about like other sports and it's like, look at LeBron, like sure. He wants (laughs) high five getting like weird. (laughs) Camera action going on. You control of the light right there. It is kind of cool. Man, I know what's wrong with the camera, but I can't actually change it, or we'd screw this whole thing up. Uh, that's so we're good. just gonna leave it. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Something about LeBron and him wanting to be better than everybody, and that's why his teams are better than everybody because he wants to be better. So that makes other people better, and something like that. I don't know. All right. I don't know. Um. I mean, it's definitely, uh, in, you know, inspires people. You know, people, yeah, sure. they're like, man, this guy has a goal. He's passionate about it. Mm-hmm. You know, I kind of want that too. But, man, I really want to see how happy this guy is when he accomplishes his goal. You know, they yeah, want to yeah. be part of that, part of something bigger than them, especially when you have huge mm-hmm. goals like that. I'm thinking about this camera being I know. Big. I can tell you got it on your mind a little bit. I don't think anyone's <laughs> that mad about it. It just bothers me. Like, I was going to super chat, but it got kind of blurry. So. Like, see how much the light changes? Um, yeah. Not that time. Keep messing with it. Oh, see that one? That was weird. Um, it's bothering me. Um, I don't know. I've lost my train of thought. Uh, that's good that pro is the goal. Because, like, I feel like, isn't it scary, though? Do you guys think that, like, if you go pro next year, will you get 14th overall? No way. Like, I think that... Oh man, who are the worst two pro teams? Uh, man, that's a hop I mean, on just my, not uh, not and see. <laughs> I know, right? I don't I don't necessarily think that like I don't want to say the So one. like PC Katana. Are maybe they at the bottom right I mean, now? I don't know, they did pretty well, but I feel like you guys can beat PC Katana. I mean, we definitely gave them a run for their money last season, so I feel I'd like assume they got better, Katana. you know. I mean, they've been playing pro. And they so. got some uh more CEP guys. Oh, did they? I think I don't good. know. I mean, good for them if they did. Uh, I know the CEP confusing. dudes were pretty good, so but I think that, like, we always see that, though, that, like, all these teams that crush it in divisional, like, semi-pro, go pro, and then suck. Man, this is really bothering yeah. me. I mean, I feel like AC Dallas, you, you know, talk. I'm gonna is doing all right. <laughs> um, man, when 187 first came around, you know, they, yeah, they went 0-4, but, you know, a lot of those games were super close. And that's what happened to us when I first got on a semi-pro team, is we'd go 0-4, and but... All those games we would lose by like one point, you know, we'd barely lose. Yeah. So it's like when you look at it from the outward, you know, it's like, oh, we're terrible. But when you look at it inward, it's like, man, we we're literally right there. one point away sure. from going on all these games from going four and oh, you know, mm-hmm. doing it the other way. So I, man, I just out of any negative, like... I always try and find a way to yeah, have sure. hope, you know, I mean, when glimmers of hope will keep you going. I'm so. like, I just think about Uprising and how like they lost a match in like 20, 2014, no, 20, 2015, they lost one match yep. and then they went pro and now they're like, eh, like a single match all year. Yeah. <laughs> like, they, they did really good. That I mean, year. you guys are like that too. Now I think if you we were are, undefeated until this last yeah, time, so, nasty, I mean, it's not, nasty got us dude. They did us nasty. I don't, I don't know. I'd just be scared, because eh. I don't think that I think that the gap is big. That's what I hear. But then again, like this kind of leads into we're gonna leave. I, this kind of helps answer another question. Um, I have written down. You guys have the opportunity to practice impact on a regular basis. What is that like, and how does it help the team? Because that kind of goes to like my question of 
do you guys think the if you went pro, you'd just get shit on all the time. But if you practice impact constantly, I think that's a good gauge of like how good the team does. I understand it's practice and impact isn't like full in on and yeah, sh- sh- no one's not trying. Everyone's hardest, not shooting yeah. nine pods, and it's not like game plans aren't perfect. But still, individual skill. It's not like guys are going half half speed. It's like they're still trying to shoot people. Yeah. So how is it? What's it like practicing impact, and how does it benefit? Do you think benefit the team? Because um, first, you guys like impact. I don't know how often do they come here. Probably like ten times a year. Maybe like two weekends before the in between tournaments it's, it's or something. Usually, like they that. come out the first week and the layouts out. Like that's cool. Like yeah. there's not another divisional team in the world that has the opportunity to play a team that good. I mean, they're the best team. But anyway, right <laughs> so you guys play them a lot. What's it like and how how is that better for DMG? I mean, you know, they, there's a kind of like cliche thing they say that, you know, you always want to play against people who are better than you. Yeah. So not only are we playing people who are better, we're playing some of the best. Um, I mean, those guys are super creative. They really, they don't make a lot of mistakes themselves and then you know, when you play against semi-pro teams, you know, if you make a mistake, maybe they'll make a move or two, you know, and make the game hard mm-hmm. for you. But when you make a mistake against Impact, they shoot, like, two or three of your dudes. Yeah. So it's like it really trains you to just make zero mistakes and, you know, really fine-tune your game to play as a team, you know, use teamwork, have good communication, and to just know the situations. They, You know, they say paintball is like chess, so it's like, you know, you go out in the field and you do one thing, and then they have the counter for that. So then you got to make up your counter for that counter. Then they make up their counter for yeah. that. And, you know, usually it's like you get shot, and then you come up with your counter. But they're like, oh, you missed them, or they dodged it. They instantly think up a counter. And then, so, you know, they, just, they keep you really creative, and they give you a lot of depth on the things that are possible on the field. Man, what I've noticed that, like, I feel like the difference, the biggest difference I've noticed, like, pro players have is like I feel like man they shoot so straight like I don't know that sounds stupid but I feel that like man playing other people like they'll come out and snap shoot the paints all over the place and I'm like "Ah, I can just kind of like come out here and keep shooting at that guy I'm not doing that against good players it's like because they come out and that first ball is like dink I'm like damn I don't know yeah that's just an observation that I (laughs) I mean when we play impact they're usually shooting you know three star better paint sometimes they bust out the five star and you know, I'm, I'm a huge part of that because, you know, sometimes, you know, people buy the cheaper paint that maybe isn't as yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. They think it's cheaper, but it's like you have to shoot a whole hopper at a dude to get him out. Yep. Or you can pay a couple sure. extra bucks for the good paint, shoot 10 paintballs, and then three of them hit that dude. Like, at what That's, point are you really saving money? It's kind of how I feel about people doing drills with cheap paint. Oh, yeah, you got to use it's good like, paint It's like, what's doing the drills. point? Because especially if you're, like, snap shooting stuff, it's like, well, it's just, like... You're Close not gonna, range is okay. You're not going to hit it, though, but it's like, if it's cheap, it's like, yeah, swerving off a little bit, and you're like, you don't know if you're actually doing it well. You know, I always think it's funny when people will practice their full field running gun with cheap paint, and I'm just like, are, are you hitting it because the ball is yeah, you're you missing no and the ball is curving, or are you missing it because... The ball is curving. Like I mean, it's good for muscle muscle memory, but at that point, it's like kind of not. Don't though. use paint. Kind of like not. just yeah. like running, just run with your paintball gun and point it at stuff. It's like that that helps I don't too. Know. I mean, and the thing you can do to make those kind of dr- drills cheaper, if you do want to get you know three star, or five star, or you know some type of custom ball, is I'll run and gun, and instead of just like mowing a bunch, I'll just try and shoot like five dink, balls dink. on my yeah, running gun sure. and really just focus on like Absolutely. the aiming aspect, mm-hmm. you know, and like really lining up my shot, tightening my body and yeah, you don't picturing have sh- how that like, ball drops in. Shoot, it's like when we would do snap shooting drills, I wouldn't even shoot two paintballs. It's just, I, you just come out and shoot one. You don't have to like yeah. <laughs> shoot ten balls at a cone. I mean, working on your brap like, snaps are know. pretty good too, but yeah, sure. yeah, first master it with the one finger and then, you know, slowly mm-hmm. raise the difficult i mean is it easier when you use more uh, uh you could kind of hold your gun different if you one ball you know i you think got it's more harder fingers yeah. on it if it's you got less harder. you're more like kind of holding the gun in place yeah. and then rolling it uh-huh. so it's all different techniques it's probably more difficult to shoot faster, yeah. i think so one thing that like this just impact reminded me one thing that i'm jealous of is that last year you guys got to play millennium yeah that was one, fun. Where, millennium paris yeah the world cup that's pretty cool yeah it was a lot of fun 
I was, just it was cool going Sebastian. over there and just, you know, seeing what it's all about and how they do it over there. They were all shocked we were, we were there. Like, a lot of those dudes were like, why are you here? Playing We'd Division like, 2? Um, I think I so. Think... It was whatever the highest one they would allow us to play. Yeah, because the Millennium, they have uh, the CPL, the Champions Paintball League, the SPL, the Semi-Pro League, and then they have Division 1, and all of those divisions are locked at the beginning of the year. Yeah. So you just can't play them if you want. Yeah. And the ranking doesn't go over because they don't use APPA. So everyone goes over there and you're technically like... Oh, we could have played whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't, well, we want, it you know, we want the challenges. Yeah, stuff I and... mean, <laughs> we'll play Division 4. Yeah. That'd be kind of lame. Everyone would be like, really? Like, uh, everyone understands playing Division 2 because you have to. Yeah. I mean, it's not like you win prize money in the divisionals over there, too, so there's kind of no reason to really say I don't think we should give prize money away. That's a whole other story. Oh, really? That's a whole other, <laughs> a whole other More thing. prize money. <laughs> nope. I mean, I'm okay with prizes at, like, maybe your guys' level and the pro level, but it's like paintball is one of the only sports where we actually give money away at tournaments. Really? Like, you go to, like, a softball tournament, a bowling tournament, it doesn't matter what it is. It's like, no one wins money. It's mm. just that, like, hey, good job, high five, here's a trophy. Yeah, honor and glory, dude. And everyone wants, like, $20,000 if they get placed in Division Four or get first in Division Four. It's ridiculous. Yeah, nah. <laughs> I just don't, I don't know. I'm not all about it. I don't know. What's another interesting question I could ask you? So Millennium, do you think Millennium's, I don't know, I don't want to say better, but better than the NXL? No. No. Because I know there's been talk, I asked that because I know there's been talk about, like, bringing over M500, like, using limited paint now in the NXL, and then there's talk about them having, like, more attractions NXL, like more like fun things to do because at Millennium they have like volleyball and like all kinds of random shit you can do. Yeah, they have some of that. Uh, they got like the know. cornhole, uh, <laughs> which is just bag like, toss. I don't know. know. That's just they, they have a couple lame. things, but and I remember one event they had uh, like the beer pong thing where it was like trash cans and they use like a giant soccer ball or some type of inflatable oh, yeah. ball. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. A little something different, but yeah, they they should do more stuff like that. I mean, it's you know it's a cool way to meet people and you know make friends and hang out. I always say like if you suck and you didn't make the tournament, you can go play some games. Maybe they could have a dunk tank. Yeah, I think I saw that somewhere. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that would be cool. Dunk tank would be kind of weird. M five hundred. Uh, you know, M five hundred is fun. M fifteen hundred. I mean, I'm I'm down with that too. <laughs> I, do. I I mean, M five hundred is fun. I I feel like. I feel like just playing, you know, machine guns like the NXL does is funner, yeah. but I don't know if they do. Do they currently offer an M500 division? It for NXL? Yeah, because I mean, no. if there's a demand for it, like maybe maybe they should. You like, but like, not. should they make everyone play that? I don't know. I, th I think machine gunning is definitely the funnest. I feel like it's the highest <laughs> level of uh, adrenaline you can have. You know, everyone's just trying to put it on you. And but do you think it makes paintball better? Like, do you think that because I have nine pods and I'm in back center and I can just shoot eight pods at this gap that's this big is good? I mean, we still get down the field. When people, that's what people do. We still well, get down the field. So I also think that the W has changed it a lot. Yeah. Before the it took w, away those cross shots. I think the points were a lot slower, and that's when we were talking about the limited paint thing. And now the W's here, it's like, I don't know. Like, games are not going for eight minutes. Yeah. It seems like two minutes, two minutes goes by, and you're like, man, this is a long one. Yeah, yeah. And you still are only shooting. I mean, two minutes, you could probably shoot eight pods. But I don't know. I like the idea of limited paint. I like the idea of limited paint because I think to the average person, to, like, the average tournament player, it feels cheaper. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you yeah. You guys probably get free paint at tournaments and shit. But. <laughs> I mean, if we win. Yeah, um, that's you know, true. That, that Imperial that's program, everyone. man, yeah, they, yeah. they hook it up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, I like I like maybe not even 500, but there's like M700 or something like that. Maybe that, like I think that's a little pods, more reasonable. Three pods in a hopper. Yeah. or Yeah, because then you know your snake guy can give and your front judo guy can each give a pod to the back center. And I don't like that idea. I don't think we should be able to trade paint either. Really? Though. Oh yeah. man, I love. Uh, that's what I like. You oh, know, actually, know. in the Millennium, the one point I got guys to give me pods, I got shot off the brakes. <laughs> no, I was like, You're all like right, they're they're never it was like, what happened? Did it slow you like, down a bunch only, or something? I was like, got, I Marvin had six pods and now everyone's just got a hopper. Yeah, sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, what else? What? So we know, I also had, what are your paintball goals? But you kind of answered that in DMG's goals. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to go pro, but along with that, I would just, 
I mean, paintball changed my life a lot. You know, before I said I was kind of into some negative things, and you know, paintball really gave me like a sense of purpose, sense of That's community, cool. yeah. and just you know, a, a huge passion for my life. So, I really do want to just like educate people about paintball, you know, to help them get better, but then also just bring new players into the sport and just share this sport that I love pretty much with the world. I mean, I, it, like I said, it changed my life, and it's cool. the more I can do that for other people or just show them this cool, positive activity that's super mm -hmm. fun, like, the better. That's cool. That's good. More people need to play paintball. Yeah. Uh, I mean, then, how could you not? It's, I feel like it's the funnest sp sport ever. It's like, what's not the love? I, mean, I have water polo. That's still the best. <laughs> Seriously, though. I've but, never played that. I mean, maybe I should try it well, out. Like, I get a whole new passion. I was really good at water polo, so I think that has to do with why I like okay, it. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Basically, what is your most memorable paintball experience? Oh, man. Um, well, so there, uh, we were playing this one match a couple tournaments ago. Against really, a match? I would have figured, like, oh, we won this tournament. or I'd have been like, we went to Paris. That'd have been I mean, that, that was pretty fun, but, you know, I... Anyway, like I'm about, not going to tell you what your most yeah, has to be this one. experience is. Um, yeah, so we were just playing this one point, and, uh, you know, I really like teamwork. Like, it's cool shooting out dudes, but when you, like, help a teammate get kills, yeah, yeah. I really like that. And uh, so there was one point, I don't remember how many guys were left, but they the enemy had, like, a dude in, like, the god, which is the bunker right before the snake. And they had a guy in, like, Drito 2 or something. We were in, like, Drito 1 and somewhere on the snake side, I want to say, like, snake corner. Um, and then I was in like one of the middle Drito bunkers, Drito side bunkers. And um, so Tim, he yelled that one of their, I was watching the Drito side and Tim yelled that one of the snake guys was about to go. So like I switched real quick, came off my job, shot a lane right in front of the snake and the dude ran through it and I shot him. And then I went to switch back, but since I had came off my job, the Drito guy started yeah. rapping on me. So then I told my teammate Josh, hey, this dude's rapping, he's gonna go and then Josh, leaned out and shot him so it was like two like the three-man double alley-oop yeah, yeah. and like people on the sidelines were like oh my god that was sick <laughs> oh that, like that's how you play paintball you know and i always preach teamwork and paintball you know anytime yeah, you can yeah. make two guys against one guy is huge and that was like Absolutely. in those type of situations you know teams are like what can we do like we can't mm -hmm. put guys in and move anywhere because they just switch up and shoot us out i feel like that's an advantage like at least with you guys, because a lot of people have been on the team for so long that, like, you kind of have that, I don't know, probably chemistry or just friendship. So you kind of know what people are going to do. Like, I know for me, like, my friend Kyle, you know Kyle? Kyle, yeah. Like, there is nobody on the planet that I feel more comfortable playing paintball with just because, like, we're friends. Yeah. And, like, I can yell at him to do something or, like, just whatever, and it just works. Yeah. I don't know. A big part of it for us, and you know, knowing someone's play style and what they they do is huge. But we just talk about paintball so much, and like all the situations, especially layout specific. Yeah. So it's like, I'll say what I do on a side, and the guy's like, "Well, if you were doing that, I would just do this." And then I'm like, "Well, if you do this, then I would do that." So it really helps us get That's like a lot cool. of that depth, for just because sure. you know, as a back guy, my job is to shut down front guys. Mm -hmm. So. A lot of guys will go up to dudes and other, you know, people who play their position and try and get tips from them, which yeah. is great. But also don't forget to give the get the tips from the guys who you're trying to shut down because that yeah, helps you course, get into their head. Sure. And anytime you can think like they're thinking, know then you your can opponent. outsmart them. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. It's like all the pro guys, I feel like they're so used to playing against each other that they, like, know who's going to do what. Yeah. Like I was listening to today, this morning – the Carl Markowski podcast, which is good. If yeah, no I've listened to a couple to of those. That. I like that uh, he does Nick that. Nick Laval was on it, and they were talking about different player speeds. Like, you have a guy who's like a five that's just crazy, all the way to like a, a one who's just like a lazy, like slow person who doesn't like move a bunch. And they're like saying who's predictable. And like Carl, they're like, Carl's a five, so we know that he's going to want to do this. And like knowing opponents is key. But I think that's easy at the pro level because you're – I mean, there's not as many teams, so you're constantly going to play the same guys year after year after yeah. year after year. Well, and there's just, you know, hours and hours of footage you can watch. For sure, you I mean, just watch the webcast. Scouting's a lot easier when you can just yeah, see you're a guy's like, entire oh, history. Yeah, you know, he doesn't like to shoot with this thing or whatever. Yeah. You can, like, figure out tendencies. Exactly, or how, uh, sure. how people react to stuff. Most certainly. So, I feel like that concludes 
the questions that I want to ask you. Right. Now, we had some people send in some stuff that, I don't know, we're going to answer. Okay. Um, and then, like I said, Jake, uh, Jake has been collecting um, some questions from the chat, too, that he sent me. So yeah, super chat. We'll get to those. Those are good. I, like <laughs> I will. No, you know what? I said that's right. We said we were going to do that. So um, let's figure this out <laughs> first. Um, I said that I would um, answer or talk to Super Chat people. There have been Trace, three of you. Left Nut, you always seem to be here. He what says, up, Left he Nut? Says, Hello, Marvin. <laughs> yeah, so, so we have a thing where you call shotgun, right, to, oh, in the yeah, rental yeah, car to get yeah. it, and that's how you call window or not. Is you have to call yeah. Left Nut or Right Nut. So, yeah. what up, Left Nut? <laughs> I always get shotgun, so I'm the best at it. I, this is Matt. I'll, I'll answer this one. What is your take on the Clone Fives in Chipotle or Kudobo? I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't know if we have that here. Uh, Qdoba? Qdoba. I don't know. We don't We're not exact, pronouncing it right, so we don't have that here. So uh, Chipotle. They, yeah, uh, I, I probably I prefer it's Chipotle. Kudobo. I, but I don't know. Anyway, Clone Fives. Um, clone Fives are bad. I'm not a fan, like I say all the time on this thing. I am not that big of a fan of MacDev. I feel that like all these small companies, it's just hard to get parts and service for. Yeah. I'd love to like MacDev. I'd love to support like MacDev and Alien and I don't know, Machine Vapor and all these smaller companies, but the products are just a little sketchy. <laughs> Jeremy, you're awesome. Always here. Thank you, sir. You've got friends over. So I'm stopping guy to give you a quick super chat. What's up, Marvin? What up? <laughs> Okay, up, Jeremy. Those, yeah. So let's answer. Okay, so Jared Wynn, he sent three very good questions in that I liked a lot. What up, Jared? How do you prepare? How do you prepare for a tournament? A week out, so like the weekend before, the morning of, and right before each match. Um, Those right. are like three questions. So okay, so a few weeks know. out. Uh, man, I just study the layout. I always keep a running list of you know things I need to work on you know in my phone. Oh, I forgot this part. Never mind. Continue. Okay, That's things Jared, I need to Jared's work question. on, uh, <laughs> you know, or uh, things I just want to focus on on my game. And you know, I don't always pick every single one before uh, a day of practice. You know, I'll pick one or two and just really focus on mastering that. Like. Now, I've even done things like wrap pink duct tape around my feed neck because, you know, your feed neck's right in front of your eyes in the game. So it's like a little visual cue to be like, uh, hey, remember this thing you were thinking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And that's really helped me in the past. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just a week out, I really just study the layout a lot, uh, try and memorize my shots. Uh, thing I'll do is I'll film the field and then uh, take screenshots of some of the different shots. And then I'll, like, quiz myself in my mind, like, uh, can the wall? What can what bunkers can the wall see through the left window? What what, what can they see on the cross shots through the left window? Um, and just really remember those shots so that way you know if I hear somebody say, "Oh, the king's wrapping the inside," it's like, "Hey, I have a shot on that." And then I can I like that. Yeah, I can shoot those dudes. Um, and talking to my teammates, you know, like I was saying before about just different situations and what I would do or what they're trying to do and how I'd shut them down and see what their retort is. I mean, sometimes we'll even. Uh, Print out a layout and lay it down, and then we'll get little uh, Monopoly pieces or, you know, whatever. Yeah. And uh, set them up and be like, all right, so if I was doing this or this three-on-three, -three, if here's the situation, you know, what would you do? So have you seen the 3D printed paintball fields? I have, yeah. Well, there you go. I have, yeah. We're just broke paintball people, so no yeah. one's been me on that. I mean, what? Doesn't Style <laughs> Supply make them? I don't know. I, th I, think, I think they do. I, I see no, it on their Facebook, so no shout out Style Supply. <laughs> No clue. Yeah, get, I mean, get those. That's, that's super helpful. Weeks before? Morning of. Um, all right, so. Would you have any, like, paintball pre-match rituals? Let's answer that question. That's kind of what that's uh, asking. Man, right just there. stretching. I mean, I that's always got to stretch. I don't stretch and I hurt yeah. myself. Uh, I mean, yeah, especially as you get older. I mean, all, all like, the mainstream professional athletes stretch before they play and all the time. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's, that's huge. It prevents injury. And it just feels good after you stretch I out know. and you go to run around and. Yeah. It's kind of gets you into that mind state of like, hey, I'm this, you know, serious, you know, badass athlete guy, and you know, it kind of just makes you makes you play like that, I guess. <laughs> badass athlete. <Yeah. laughs> Fair. 
And then, uh, yeah, the night before, um, to make sure I drink lots of water, drink some Pedialyte, yeah. so that way I have my uh, all my electrolytes. Most of Pedialyte flavors suck. I really like the the pink one that's like strawberries and lemons and cherries on it. I don't know the name of the flavor, but the grape one's pretty yeah. Good. Is it? I, 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 you know, know. I actually haven't tried that one, but some of the other flavors are medicine. But that one, it's it's pretty good. But just don't chug the whole thing because you will get a stomach ache. Like ride bike. When I rode my bike a lot, I used to make ghetto sports drinks. There you go. With uh, I literally put salt water, salt, sugar, and this stuff called maltodextrin, which is a complex carbohydrate that actually works like a simple carbohydrate. Crazy boost of energy. Yeah, yeah. You know, I actually take yeah. that, too. I have that, and I have regular dextrose for my quick carbs. Bam! Yep. It's real stuff, I mean, dude. Them supplements. T- tons of multidextrose. Yeah. It's actually awful for you. Is it? Sort of. We'll give you diabetes if you just drink that all day. Well, yes. Oh, man. <laughs> Because, like, so, we talk about glycemic load. So, the reason people get diabetes is because they eat a certain carbohydrate and their glucose spikes. So, sugar does that. And maltodextrin is actually, has a higher glycemic load than pure sugar. Oh, wow. So, it's like, boom, and then just drops. It's Ooh. the same thing with white bread, though. You could eat white bread and technically get diabetes from eating too much white bread. I, I do a lot of that, too. I, I'll, while I'm at practice, I'll make what I call bread sandwiches, which it is don't just matter, two though. pieces like, of bread. And if you're burning off that energy, it's it's totally different. It's a lot easier because people drink sugar so much. And you're then not, they sit around. And you're not going to get diabetes from white bread. Oh, okay. Because you don't eat, much, they don't eat that much white bread. Well, I eat the Hawaiian bread, so. The people that get diabetes from, like, sugar just drink soda all the time you're not okay. like eating white bread right now you're not gonna like go home and just eat a bunch of white bread <laughs> i mean yeah i might put some sloppy joes on you're top of like, it or make a sandwich uh, hamburger buns over all day yeah. <laughs> i don't know anyway enough with that um um i don't know what what, what i like uh we kind of answered that one yeah we'll go with that cool what are some good exercises for paintball. He wants to know what good exercises to get back into paintball shape, but what, I don't know, do you do any specific exercises for paintball or fitness yeah, stuff? I, I mean, I work out four times a week, but the yeah. most important things for paintball are your legs and your core. So, I mean, mm-hmm. uh, I feel like the fastest way to get your speed up and just your overall agility is, you know, do a lot of squats and a lot of deadlifts and uh, just get that type of strength up, you know, get your ab strength mm-hmm. but when i first started working out for paintball and i was i hate going to the gym even still yeah i, don't. I hate working out but i like being you know i like having agility and being kind of quick so that's more important so it kind of outweighs it so um yeah just hit those legs and do core exercises yeah i know you can talk to guys like uh, greg sewers um and he has like a real good Scamp, program he does Scott Camp. yeah that, that guy too i mean i know greg so i'm gonna shout out the homie yeah <laughs> but uh but yeah, he has like a great program, and then uh, they have that BKI paintball thing too that Skimp mm-hmm. is a part of. That uh, you know, I've actually signed up for that a couple of times, and they have a lot of good information on oh, there really too. Cool. I did. I know I did plyometric stuff a lot. What What is like, that? Is that like we're you? It, it's all agility stuff. So you set up like ladder, like the ladder. Yeah, yeah. Like, I do that too. Yeah. So and that's another great way if if you're trying to like get fast is just running like whether you put on a weight vest or fill up your paintball pack or uh, just practice hitting sprints you know warm up with some you know 50 percent and 75 percent and then bust some full sprints you know do like 20 sprints twice a week and you know really just focus on getting your form down there's a ton of information on youtube for that even though it's a little bit different for paintball but yeah if you if you combine the two with strength training and plyometric training like i feel like you're gonna be the the, best you can be basketball stuff would be paintball specific too i mean i think basketball we don't they're not really using like if they're crawling you're not really crawling in basketball (laughs) but you definitely do the like same cutting like fast movement stuff yeah anyway (laughs) oh gosh i'm hitting the wrong keys guys oh gosh i feel like you're due due for a couple of those anyway we got all kinds of stuff happening here um what else? Uh, let's see. I don't know. I'm like skipping questions that I was going to ask. Um, okay. 
let's go with how often do you play paintball? How often do you practice? I think you play paintball more than anybody I know. <laughs> um, yeah, I kind of pride myself on that. <laughs> uh, I play. I usually play at least twice a week when the layout's out. At least. Yeah, at least. Sometimes three. Um, at least. And I have, <laughs> luckily for me, I'm able to like shoot my paintball gun in my backyard. I kind of have like a, I have cool neighbors. And um, so yeah, I'll, I'll practice doing some like snap shooting at home and stuff or just anything I can do to sharpen my mind. I mean, whether it's sign up for like Lumosity, you know, uh, just to sharpen my brain. Um, I mean, I do all kinds of stuff to just stay sharp and push myself to the next level, but um, yeah, at least twice a day. And when the layout's out, I'm always playing on the layout. Or and when it's not out, I just work on my general skills. You know, I refer to my uh, my running list that I have in my phone and just anything I can do to cross stuff off the list and commit it to memory. Um, I do that. Crazy. That's too. That's what I think is crazy. You play so much baseball, I would be so tired of it. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, I think we're good. <laughs> Good on paintball for a while. This is a comment or a question, I should say, from Jake Krulin, who's helping me out with this chat. Um, who is the best person you've played against? And I probably screwed this up on the screen. Uh, who is the best person you've played against? And who is your favorite place in person to play with? So Jake was like, not teammates. OK. Um. Man. I don't, I mean, I was like, I, said, I yeah. So, uh, I mean, Nick Laval's pretty good. Um, I mean, I really like playing against him, especially because he gets a lot of props for being the best. So, yeah, yeah. you know, I always, I always like to try and take him down that way. Uh, you play you know, against It makes me feel like I'm team. hanging. Uh, I mean, any of the impact dudes, all those front guys got yeah. a lot of dirty, sneaky tricks. And, I mean, I love it. It really pushes me to be the best player that I could be. So, um, Alice Goldman. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's real good, and I mean all those dudes are hella cool too. So you know they they share tips with us and stuff like uh -huh. that. So yeah, you know, they're they're all around just good dudes. Favorite person to play paintball with? With dude, I, I love playing against, or I love playing with Dave Dave Baines. I mean I I mean, I'm all about teamwork and communication, and I mean, he's, he's just so it. good about it. Yeah, and um, it's all the things he's taught me, the way he does it on the field, the way when shit's hitting the fan, he just keeps everyone calm and knows what to do is it's, it's awesome yeah so those are all the pre sent in questions we're gonna do like I don't know how long we'll be doing this for so we'll go to like 830 so we're gonna go another waiting for this to load 15 ish minutes cool so some people that um, sent in questions from the chat let's let's just go with that Jake has been oh, kindly enough answering questions for this, or sending me questions. I don't know. I'm trying to read and talk at the same time. <laughs> Charles, well, so I'm just reading these without, without actually reading these. <laughs> Charles like Dalton. I started playing paintball again, and somebody on my local Division 4 team asked me if I, asked me if I was looking to join a team and to see if I wanted to try out. I'm interested but I don't know where to start. Any advice? Advice that didn't, <laughs> didn't um, get the whole question. I mean, it, yeah, if they're asking you to try out, I mean, that's huge. I mean, obviously they see something in you. If it's just like a general tryout they're having, just go out there and you know do your best. Uh, the biggest thing is just having a positive attitude and just uh, being open to criticism. Yeah. I know for our team uh, and just DMG in general, uh, I feel like personally I can – People with the right attitude, I can mold them into being great paintball players really quick. Um, and you know, there's guys who does have the, the, there's guys who do have the right attitude that you know we've done that with, you know, and taking them from being, you know, Joe Schmo off the street to being like pretty decent players, you know, really fast. So that's the biggest thing is just if people can work with you, then they're gonna want you on the team, you know, rather than the dude who art, you know, he's he's pretty good, already thinks he knows it all. That's probably the dude that's gonna yeah. be stuck where he is. True. You have to be able to like learn. Exactly. Get better. I've always said like communication too, because a lot of these like lower division teams don't communicate at all, and I feel like standing out 
Yeah, you can stand out at a tryout just by yelling more. <laughs> yeah, I mean, talking and listening. You know, when I get on the gate, you know, you, I like to, because I've been to tryouts, you know, I, I ask people their name and then try and, you know, make a little strategy with them. Like, the more, I guess, outgoing you are, and it's, it helps because ultimately what's going to make you great at paintball is your ability to use teamwork. So even if it's just one dude that you're playing on that same side of the field with, just set up your little operation and, you know, figure out what you're going to do to get down the field and uh, put that to use. And most of the time, especially against random tryout guys who are probably just going for theirs and doing whatever, if you got a little preconceived plan, yeah. then you're going to dunk on those dudes most of the time. Plus, or at least the people running the tryout are going to be like, man, this guy. Yeah, you're, you're trying to be a teammate. Exactly. Not just like, I'm going to shoot everyone and make the team. Exactly, You're yeah. actually trying to help be better. The camera's still bothering me. <laughs> So, Jason asked, Marvin, what do you think about shooting right and left-handed without switching your hands, just switching shoulders? Do you think it could pay off for a faster switch from side to side of the bunker? So, the old lean back, like you're shooting this way, right? Normal, yeah. and then you just need to shoot left real fast, so you're just like. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's very situational, I mean, it, if you're going to really, like, switch jobs and look that way, like, you shouldn't just lean back and shoot. But, you know, yeah, if, if someone's like, hey, this dude's about to go, and you can just lean back and shoot, like, might switch as well. Sides. Yeah, don't waste time switching hands real yeah. quick. Uh, I also like to do it where if I'm trying to, like, set up a trap for some dudes and, you know, switch jobs real quick, I'll switch and do the lean back shooting this way, and then I'm instantly ready to switch and shoot at a dude with the lowest possible profile yeah. and with the quickest possible switch. Yeah. So. You just got to know which situations to use it in and which ones is not as beneficial. So trap, you mean like you'll be shooting, like say gunfighting with a guy, and then you want to make him think that you're not doing that anymore so he can move forward. Yeah, um, kind of. there's a few ways to do it. You can either just completely come off the job and there's a dude waiting. It works great when you have yeah, a dude who snuck sure. up to the wall, you know, if they don't know he's there. And just look that the, spot. The best way, though, is to sell it. If you just switch, that guy's going to be like, hmm, this guy was looking at me, and all of a sudden he's, no one's looking at me. It's kind of weird. But if you, like, wait and hang out, and then he shoots at you, and you really sell the tuck, like tuck in hella hard and, you know, make your bunker wiggle a bunch, he's going to be like, oh, here's my chance. I better go, you know, without even checking stuff off. And that dude will get blasted. So I there's like a little dirty stuff. trick for you guys, man. You gotta, you gotta that's sell the like, trap. Uh, that's high divisional paintball stuff. I don't do that stuff. <laughs> I mean, you you could, you could do it if you talk about it before the game. Yeah, game plans or strategy. Something. Exactly. Yeah, some battle tactics. What? Let's see here. Jake, some of your questions are not posted all posted all the way. Um, We answered Kyle asked one that we already answered. <laughs> Man, I don't know. We're we'll, we're just gonna read one. Destiny Maverick says, uh, "Sitting here doing tech on my marker for red, right, and blue on Sunday. Now wondering if GM D DMG." has something to do with that or do the, I don't know. Skip that one. I have no yeah. idea what that uh, is. I think red, white, and blue is like a scenario event. Is it? Yeah. I mean, I imagine, um, but I don't know. I, I mean, not that I know that we have anything to do with it, to be honest, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> no idea. I feel like, man. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just trying to find questions, guys. Um, well, I don't know. Sure. What's your setup? What is your main paintball shooting thing? All right. Um, I have a CS1. I have a the GI level loader. I have um, a Ninja tank. I use. Uh, I think I have like a Planet Eclipse. What are those called? Like the tank. The tank cover things, like the rubber tank back. Yeah, the thing. tank tank grip. Yeah, I like. I really like having having that grip. That mm -hmm. way, you can have the the your tank at any spot on your arm, no matter what. When you switch hands, it's gonna stick to your mm -hmm. arm. A lot of people use nothing on the back of their tank, and I feel like I on those quick arm switches, it just slides off. And maybe yeah. if you get used to it, it you know it helps. But 
I put athletic tape on the back. There you go. So you get a little bit of friction on there. I feel like the rubber like tank grips or the rubber gr like tank covers are too grippy. Yeah. And like I go to switch hands or something and like move the gun fast and it's like I'm It like, does I'm it like, will God. take some of your jersey with it, it for sure. Yeah. It's like I remember in a, in a game 2 years ago or something and I've never used this thing. I actually like took it off. I was like borrowing someone's gun and I was like just took the thing. Yeah. Take over off and uh, threw it. And the bad sometimes the bad <laughs> thing about those is you know, once you've had them for a while, they start falling off. So what I like they to do out, is I'll sure. get some of that colored duct tape yeah, yeah. and duct tape it on there. Mm -hmm. And it look, you know, it keeps it on there. Plus, if you use the colored, you can have like an extra little stripe of color on your gun to, you know, be a little extra fly. So I like that too. Mm-hmm. A little bit of green. Yeah, there we go. Get some on your hat. That's right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what does Marvin, what does Marvin do for work outside? Of uh, on. Uh, Jake, I'm telling you, questions are not working. Because it literally <laughs> says, what does Marvin do for work outside of on? I'm guessing he means, like, what's my occupation? Yeah, what do you, what do you, what is, uh, what do, you do for work? I'm a, I'm a truck driver. I uh, mm -hmm. deliver appliances for a company that installs high-end appliances and residences and sometimes in businesses, but mostly just, like, residences. Exciting. Yeah. It, it's pretty fun. You know, it's pop on some kind of podcast or talk on the phone a bunch and deliver appliances, you know, get a little bit of power lifting in, get paid for it. Power lifting. And uh, the best thing is my boss is on my team, so uh, I get all the Scoop. time off that I need, you know. And that when we work true. together, we just, I drive pretty far, obviously, you know, being a delivery driver, so yeah, we just get to drive around and talk about paintball. It's awesome. That is good. Okay, here's one. Well, we kind of talked about this. We're talking about it again. In what ways does DMG need to improve to start playing at the pro level? Not to start playing, but what do you think that the team needs to improve to compete at the pro level? Uh, we just got to keep finding new and creative ways uh, to just raise the level of our teamwork. Um, and, you know, I know it's kind of layout specific and like the things that you can do, but just getting everyone on the same page and uh, on how we uh, talk on the field and like the order that we talk in and everyone just knowing how each other plays fully really just comes down to teamwork I think is the big difference. I mean, if you, you know, a lot of people can practice a bunch, get your snapshot down, get your laning real good, but I think that's what makes the big difference with pros is knowing the situations and you know, there's layout specific situations, but then there's a lot of those situations that can kind of apply to every layout or maybe the thing you do changes a little bit based on the layout. And then just, um, yeah, just teamwork, just working together. So that, oh, damn it, I lost train of thought. I was gonna ask something. So you think that individual skill wise, everyone's good enough? Because I definitely feel like, for sure, that that's one of the things that, like, I... Well, this, what you said is one of the things that, like... At one point, someone asked me what the biggest difference between semi-pro and pro was. And I always said preparation. I feel that, like, the amount of work that goes in pre-match to, like, the, like, impact and heat and, like, Dynasty and X-Factor and all these big teams do is way more than most of the semi-pro teams. Yeah. They're just like prepared, man. They know that if this happens, they're gonna try this. And they know that those 10 guys on that other team, they all know every tendency they're doing and they know stats on when guys go where and what happens. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, you think about your game plan and then you gotta think about what's the game plan that would ruin this game plan? All right, then let's make a game yeah, plan yeah. that ruins that game plan. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you have your different plays and then, you know, you. You make counters for counters, I mean, all, all the time. But I think that you guys thinking that way probably has a lot to do with why you're better than other teams in some of the division. I mean, it's been, yeah, it's been working for us. I mean, individually, I feel like everyone's, you know, snapshots are probably pretty good. Everyone's running gun is good. I mean, of course it can always be better. Dude, running and shooting, I have some of these pro guys running and shooting is ridiculous. Yeah. 
Like some of the shots that Fedorov does, like one-handed, like all the way across the field or some shit. It's like, dude, there's no way I'm doing that. Yeah, Fedorov's sick. He's definitely spent some time perfecting his I his feel craft. Like he hasn't been like as relevant lately. Really? Hmm. I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe maybe just because he figured out. He just hasn't been as good. You know who? Okay, who's your favorite pro player? Like, who's your favorite pro player to watch? Oh man. Um... Man, I mean, it just made me think of someone that I know my answer. I, you know, I like I like watching Nick Laval a lot. I like watching Rainy Stanzak a lot. Um, <laughs> man, I mean, honestly, I, I I like watching all the pros play. I mean, I, I Alexander Bridnikov. That, that guy, fool is crazy. Yeah, he's he's real good. So I don't know if you saw this, but. I can't. It wasn't last tournament. It was Dallas, right? When he's in the God, he's in God Bunker, runs back to like the tower at a back center, takes the guy's gun, fills all the way around into the snake. He literally <laughs> trades guns with a teammate. Is that allowed? I don't know. But he <laughs> trades guns with his teammate, runs into the snake, crawls to the other side of the field, and like shoots three guys in the back and gets up and hits the buzzer. I was just like, oh. Holy you're, crap. You're not doing anything. Let me just get like, your gun real quick. <laughs> literally have Finish this game. Like, that's crazy. That's hella tight. Like, no one else is going to do All that. Right. I like watching that guy, too, man. <laughs> like, like, that's nuts. Like, that just blew my mind. I'm like, did that really just happen? And I, like, rewound it and watched it over again. Like, oh, I, You know, I think I might have seen that. It was, like, a little uh, clip on, like, Facebook or Instagram or something. Crazy. It was probably all over the place. Yeah. At the time of the tournament, it was probably, like, everywhere. But it just, like... I don't know. Blew my mind. <laughs> He's always doing like the craziest shit though. It's just like abnormal. I think that's what I like is that he just does weird stuff, man. He'll like crawl into the W and like, I don't know. Maybe not that. But <laughs> so we've reached the point where I think we're going to let him go home. Um, what do you, I don't know. You want to say anything? Um, Shout outs? Yeah, or definitely. Like, that's what I was going to do. Um, yeah, I just want to shout out or... um, Capital Edge Paintball Park. I mean, it's a, it's a great place to play recreationally. It's also a great place just to, like, play speedball, you know, hang out. Everyone there is really friendly. Um, and then also it's a great place to um, – it's like a training facility, essentially, yeah. for getting as good as you can at paintball and really pushing your limits. Um, and then shout out to the Baines family, you know, especially Dave. Uh, just everything he does for DMG and the sport, but especially just putting DMG together. And, uh, yeah. And then also our sponsors, uh, GI Sports, you know, they they really hold it down for us. You know, they, they give us great gear, hella support. All those guys are super friendly, um, and they make great products. Uh, Planet Eclipse, same thing. Uh, even though a lot of times we don't need the support because their gear <laughs> works, works yeah. all the time. <laughs> Seriously. But, uh, you know, those, those guys always say what's up at the events. And, you know, sometimes, like, when we do need some teching because people don't realize they just need to change their batteries or whatever, um, you know, they, they help us out. And they're, they're super cool all the time. You know, they don't give us too much of a hard time when they're like, you forgot to change your batteries. So that's cool. Style Supply, you know, they, they hold it down. They make a bunch of cool gear for us. They make sick jerseys. And... Um, Man, I hope I'm not forgetting anyone. I don't think I am. I don't think so. I mean, none that I know of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Definitely. I don't know. Cool. Yeah. And and hey, thanks, Brad. Check out Predator yeah. Paintball if you guys want to get some paintball gear. He'll hook you up. Or like this video and then <clears throat> subscribe. Um, thanks, guys. So I always close these out by being like Monday. Come back to this YouTube channel and check out the Paintball Ruined My Week weekly Monday news recap. So do that, and then you'll find me here again Tuesday evening, like re-recovering, no, re-capping the recap, where I'll go into a little more depth on what stuff that happened and 